This is the Xiaomi 11T, which uh, Xiaomi have just announced. And they sent me one to review. In fact, they were so keen for us to keep the device secret until the launch, they've sent it in a hard case with combination locks. Of course, I waited patiently for them to send me the codes and didn't spend 30 minutes laboriously trying every combination until I finally cracked it open with bleeding fingertips. Nope, I definitely didn't do that. Xiaomi have made quite an effort to promote the filmmaking qualities of their devices. They even have Xiaomi Studios, which have presented a series of high-quality short films. They even run their own film festival. So here at Mobile Motion, we're all about shooting video on smartphones. And right now I'm even using my Samsung Note 20 Ultra to shoot this video. So I never use any DSLRs or mirrorless cameras or any other kind of cameras in my YouTube videos. It's all smartphone. And uh, so let's have a look at this device and see how good it is for shooting video. I quite like the UI. It feels pretty fresh. The fingerprint unlock is on the side and seems to work well. While this isn't a top of the range device, the phone is actually pretty big, about the same size as an iPhone 12 Pro Max or a Samsung S21 Ultra, and it only weighs a little bit less. The Xiaomi 11T has three rear cameras and one front or selfie camera. The main camera has a 108 megapixel sensor. There's also an ultra wide and a macro camera for extreme close ups. The three rear cameras are a 25mm wide angle with a f1.75 aperture, a 16mm ultra wide angle with f2.2 aperture, and a 49mm macro lens with f2.4 aperture. The selfie camera is a 24mm wide angle with f2.45 aperture. So the main camera has the biggest aperture, which combined with the bigger sensor, should give us some shallow depth of field, or oh, yeah, blurry background. The main camera shoots up to 4K at 30 frames per second. So no 4K at 60 frames per second on this device, but there is 60 frames per second capability at 1080p. And even though the Xiaomi 11D has a 108 megapixel sensor, there is no 8K video option. The ultra wide selfie and macro cameras are limited to 1080p at 30 frames per second. So no 4K and no 60 frames per second. There's three lens picker buttons, although the top two times must be a digital zoom using the 108 megapixel sensor, as there is no telelens in this device. The native camera app is very reminiscent of the Samsung camera UI. One difference is that the pro mode covers both photo and video and allows you to switch between them using a button by the shutter button. For modes, there's pro, video, photo, portrait, which is fake bokeh for photos, and more, which opens up lots of extras. If they're in a grey filled circle, that means they're already installed. But if you tap a grey unfilled circle, that feature will be downloaded onto your device. Using the standard video mode with auto settings and digital stabilization, the video quality is quite good. But to my eyes, there's quite a few software processes going on, which kind of degrade the image quality rather than enhance it. To my eyes, this is a little bit oversaturated and perhaps over sharpened. And the digital stabilization does do some weird things to the image. In this clip, part of the tree is kind of shifting around on its own, which is a little bit strange. Of course, auto mode is not designed for filmmakers. All this software is there to beef up the image for casual smartphone camera users. The software is really designed for people who just want to point and shoot and let the camera make the best of it. When I switched to pro mode, things started to improve. Immediately, some of these processes are removed and the image quality improves before you even start changing the settings. So I tried filming in bright daylight and then later in the evening during the golden hour, which should be perfect for filming and also during an overcast day as well. When it's overcast, there's less light contrast to deal with, so low dynamic range is less of a problem. Pro mode allows you to have manual control when shooting videos and photos. This means you can set ISO, shutter speed, focus and white balance manually. One small disappointment is the lack of a 24 frames per second option in both regular or pro mode. I mean, if you're selling your smartphone as a cinema camera, as Xiaomi clearly are, 
What with their Xiaomi Studio Productions and Film Festival, then surely a 24 frames per second option is a must. Now, the Xiaomi native camera app comes with a log setting. This should flatten the colors and contrast, and that allows you to color grade your footage later. But I found the non-log footage to be so saturated and contrasty, the switching to log gave me what I would call an ordinary video. That said, it does give you a little bit of extra room to add contrast and some color work. Note that when you switch to log, the camera also switches to 4K at 30 frames per second. So you can't shoot Xiaomi log in other frame rates or resolutions. One nice touch is that in the gallery, any footage shot using log is actually marked with an L. So that makes it a little bit easier to find those clips. The downside is that log seems to create quite a bit more noise in the shadows. And it doesn't really seem to make any difference if it's bright conditions or not. As well, when I was in log mode, I noticed this kind of circular pattern appeared as I panned round from bright to dark with the exposure locked. The Xiaomi 11T comes with digital stabilization and not optical stabilization. So that means the device uses software to manipulate the image frame by frame to make it look more smooth. It's a bit like using stabilization features in your editing software. But while your editing software takes some time to stabilize your footage, in a camera, it's doing it live. The problem with this is it often introduces some kind of strange artifacts into the image. You might notice some shimmering in sections of the frame as you move the camera. And the good thing is, in most Android devices, you can turn off stabilization. And this Xiaomi 11T is no different. I tried shooting in various conditions, and once I turned the stabilization off, the image became cleaner, and these artifacts disappeared. Another downside of the digital stabilization is that it crops quite a bit of the frame. Well, this might just be in 4K. Of course, the problem is your footage now needs stabilizing, but my advice would be to use a gimbal or stabilize it using editing software. Even editing apps like LumaFusion now have a stabilization feature. In fact, to get my footage as smooth as possible, I usually use both a gimbal and something like Warp Stabilizer in Adobe Premiere Pro. The autofocus is quite good, but quite a bit less responsive than the flagship devices I'm used to, such as the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Samsung 21 Ultra. Also, when it adjusts focus, it quite often doesn't change smoothly, and quite often it snaps into place. So it's not really usable if you wanted to shoot something professional looking. The autofocus performed better in brighter conditions, but still jerked into place and was a little bit slow to adjust. However, you do have the option to use manual focus in pro mode, so it is possible to shoot a nice smooth focus pull if you don't mind doing it manually. The Xiaomi native camera also comes with an HDR option for photos and videos. This operates at all frame rate and resolution options except for 60 frames per second. But once you select HDR, the 60 frames per second option is no longer available. As well, you can only use the main camera. HDR should give you a greater dynamic range by using such AI features as dynamic tone mapping. And I think it does quite a good job at evening out the tones. When it's locked, it stays locked, unlike the iPhone's dynamic tone mapping. The problem with HDR is that it's actually taking away contrast because it brings down the highlights and boosts the ISO in the shadows. And that's why this HDR shot looks more washed out than if I shot without HDR. Thing is, the camera is already adding contrast. So these two processes are kind of working against each other. And that said, in some cases, I did find it useful. For example, in this shot inside, it helps to prevent the windows from blowing out. I tried filming myself with the Xiaomi 11T on a tripod. First with the selfie camera and then using the main sensor. If I'm filming myself talking to camera, for example, I'm looking for a nice shallow depth of field to separate me from the background. I'm also looking for a good face detection autofocus so that I don't have to worry about whether I'm in focus or not. So I filmed using the native camera in auto and in 4K at 30 frames per second. I also tried 1080p as well as pro mode and in log mode too to see what brought the best results. I had the stabilization switched off as the phone was mounted on a tripod, so it's not really needed. There was a nice amount of blurry background, 
and the face detection autofocus found my face no problem in each shot. The 4K footage was certainly nicer looking than the 1080p footage, but it was still pretty good. And certainly, I think you could use this device to film yourself for a YouTube channel or for mobile journalism or that kind of thing and get really good results. I think Log gave the most natural skin tones, even without grading the footage. At first, I tried shooting Log with auto exposure and the footage did seem a little bit dark. Plus, there was some noticeable noise in the shadows around the trees. But once I set the exposure manually, the noise in the shadows disappeared. The selfie camera is pretty good quality for a mid-range phone. That said, I don't have much experience with current mid-range phones, but I put some clips here and you can let me know in the comments how they compare to other brands and models. You know, that obviously goes for all the clips in this video. The portrait mode is where the camera software creates a fake blurry background so it looks like you're using a longer lens. In the main mode selector, there is a portrait mode, but that's only for photos. However, you can access a portrait mode for video. So when you're in video mode, just toggle on this little star or magic wand icon. And so now you have the choice of applying glamour effects or bokeh. Point at the subject and choose bokeh, and then use the slider to apply a blurry background. And this is also available in the selfie camera as well, which you know, makes sense. Now there's some other fun extras, such as movie frame, which is basically a widescreen crop. Of course, you can easily crop the frame in an editing program, but this might save you time. What it produces is actually 16 by 9 footage, but with black bars at the bottom and top. So you're not going to be outputting a widescreen file. If we go into the more section, we can find some other features. Vlog allows you to shoot clips and the software will edit them together and add music and effects. If you've used apps like the DJI Mimo app, you'll probably be familiar with this concept. Movie Effects gives you more things to play with. Magic Zoom creates that vertigo shot. There's a slow shutter effect, time freeze which freezes one side of the frame, and parallel world which is like a kind of mirror effect. Dual video allows you to record a picture within picture video using two cameras at the same time. And 108 allows you to use the full 108 megapixel sensor, but only for photos. For slow motion options, there's 120 frames per second at 720 or 1080p. Then there's 240 frames per second and 960 frames per second, but limited to 720p resolution. My guess is that the 960 frames per second slow motion is created actually from a slower frame rate and then interpolation is used to create the effect of 960 frames per second. I say that because when I recorded a clip using 960 frames per second setting, I found the edges around my hand reveal there is some kind of digital process going on. In video mode, you can apply some preset color filters, swipe up and down to find the right look for your clip and they're also available using all the other cameras, not just the main camera. However, once you apply the filter, you will be limited to a maximum of 1080p and 30 frames per second.
that's it for this review of the Xiaomi 11T. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about smartphone filmmaking, you can join us on Patreon, uh, where I've got some extras there. There's like podcasts, there's five short films that I've shot on smartphones, there's a 35-page guide which tells you how to shoot a short film on a smartphone. And there's loads of other things as well, like how to get the film look and all that kind of stuff. Uh, big thanks to all the patrons who joined recently. We're up to about 41 now, which is uh, really cool. Helps to support the channel, keeps everything going. And uh, that's it. So see you in the next video. Ciao.